Hey, Moon Magic Super Souls, thank you for joining me for this video. In today's video, we are going to discover how the coming moon month, this is actually the 13th new moon of the year, and we don't always get 13 new moons in a year. We are going to discover how the whole of this moon month can set the pace for the entire year energetically for you, and how you can use the energy, the incoming energy, of this moon phase, starting with the new moon in Capricorn, to really align yourself with everything that you wish to manifest and everything that you wish to create in the coming year of 2023. So I'm recording this in the window of energy around the solstice. Now, the solstices, the equinoxes, they there's like a, a four day window of energy, and that's certainly been my experience, where the earth, it is as if the earth literally slows down and stops. If you really, really get still on the day of the solstice, do you know, you can literally feel that turning point. So there's a massive natural shift in the energy. The Capricorn new moon, which is also the 13th new moon of 2023, falls within that window, that four day window. Uh, literally, we're coming out of that four day window. So just as the solstice energy is shifting and turning and starting to move forwards, this new moon then happens literally as as we as that energy is starting to get into gear. So we've got a natural harnessing of energy already taking place in terms of shift and transition. We then have the 13th new moon of the year. In 2023, we only have 12 new moons, and we also don't actually have another Capricorn new moon until 2024, January 2024. So the energy of this new moon is really primed for evaluation and setting, uh, setting shifting gears that's perhaps the best way of saying it so anything in your life that you are either not happy with you feel it's stuck it's not moving it's not working this is a new moon where you can invest your energy in setting wishes and intentions and really bringing focus to your thoughts and your feelings it's really important that we do both your thoughts and your feelings so that you are working out with great clarity exactly how you want to what you want to change okay now because mars is in retrograde and we are now in the mercury retrograde shadow as well mercury will move into retrograde in a few days time after this uh, new moon and stay in retrograde until the middle of january what we're also going to see is not necessarily things suddenly popping up and moving forwards the energy is about reflection. The energy is an opportunity to slow down, lean into the learning, and then move ourselves forward, sow the seeds that we need to sow in order to be really prepared. It's it's like having a foundation of preparation for the coming years. Now, anyway. If you are, I don't know, a painter or, or a decorator, ask any painter or decorator, they will tell you that the key to a beautifully decorated room is the preparation. If you speak to a gardener, they will tell you if you really prepare the soil, you dig the beds, you nurture the beds, you fertilize the beds, you put all the organic matter in there that you need, then you sow your seeds. The seeds won't pop and sprout immediately, but when they do, they're really going to grow. They're going to thrive, they're going to flourish because you did the groundwork. That is exactly what the energy of this moon month is about. It's not just the new moon. The energy starts with the new moon coming with the impetus of the solstice energy, the solstice turning point. It's the whole moon phase. In a moment, I'm literally going to run you through each of the stages of this moon phase and talk to you about them in terms of manifesting, but in terms of manifesting in relation to actually setting the pace and preparing the ground for the coming year so that you energetically, consciously, mindfully are really harnessing this energy to your very, very best advantage. So I'm also going to talk to you about, I'll list 
um, any large void of course periods as well. And I will tell you what those are. If you don't know what a void of course moon is, we have four significant void of course days during this moon month. So I'll tell you what, tell you about those in just a moment. What that means in terms of energy and also tell you where they are when they're happening. Now, my suggestion would be that you might want to get a pen and a paper. You might want to pause this video. If you're using a diary, a moon diary or a moon journal, you might want to grab those. Um, but a pen and paper at the very least, because you might want to make a note of some of the key dates. There's some quite strong spikes of energy. If we understand them and we know how they might affect us, it's really helpful to know when they're coming. And also these big void, of course, periods, as well as understanding how each of the moon phases can really support us in in literally preparing the ground for the coming year. So press the pause button if you need to, go grab a cup of tea or a cup of coffee and um, your pen, paper, moon diary, moon journal. And let's now look at the absolute details of this entire moon phase, starting with the new moon in Capricorn on the 23rd of December. Hello and welcome back. I hope you are now prepared. Let's dive straight in to the new moon in Capricorn. And also I'm just going to show you the cards and the runes, the oracle cards and runes that were drawn for this year, 2022's Art of Manifestation, Astro Moon Diary um, and Journal. They were in the diary. The reason I want to bring these up and you should see them coming up on your screen now is because they really do set the pace. I mean, these were cards that I and runes that I drew that I channeled when I was creating this diary, what you'll see is that they really do set the pace for the energy of this time. Be Your Brilliant Self is a card that asks you to get present and get still and really center yourself in the extraordinariness of everyday living. So we're getting really real here. And the Rune of Gateway is a rune that invites us to reflect, to get still, metaphorically to climb to the top of a mountain, cast your eyes back over your life, over everything that's ever happened, and lean into the gratitude for the learning. <clears throat> now, what this means is that we are, we're getting centered and we're in a space of review. When we can align ourselves with the energy of gratitude and the learning gained from every situation, we then reach that breakthrough point. We can pass through the gateway. We can move into a new phase and a new cycle of life. Now, the second card, the cycles of the moon, along with the rune of breakthrough, really does highlight how valuable it is to align with the energy of the moon. And I think for this moon month, it really indicates the enormity and the power, this combination of cards and runes. This is highlighting and validating the enormity of the power of this moon month in setting the pace and laying the foundation for the coming year. For anyone who's interested in actually looking at detailed um, tarot card and oracle card readings, for this moon month, for every zodiac sign, I have actually recorded some um, readings. I'm not posting these on YouTube. This is something that I actually do on Patreon. Patreon is a very different platform. There are no advertisements on Patreon that interrupt any of the read any of the uh, videos. Patreon is a site that works on the basis of donations, and I'm starting to do more and more there simply because I have a really super amazing, lovely Patreon community that's building there. Um, these are people who are making very, very generously ongoing donations that support all of the work I do, including the free stuff that I put up here on, on, the, um, on YouTube. Patreon people, you are loved and treasured. Thank you so, so much. So I do a monthly tutorial about learning to read the tarot cards and the runes and the oracle cards for my Patreon people. And I have just done a set of readings for every single zodiac sign um, for this moon month. And assuming that my Patreon people enjoy them and love them, I will continue. If you're, if you are interested in this, um, there is no, um, there's no fixed uh, ongoing donation. Um, you can donate whatever you want, but that's kind of how that platform works. And you are very, very welcome to join us over there and to join that community if you'd like to access either the tutorials or the ongoing readings for every single zodiac sign for each of the moon months. 
Um, so anyway, let's move on. So let me tell you a little bit about this new moon from a tribal perspective and from the Celtic traditions. So when we get when we get a 13th new moon in the year, it aligns with the tree law of Elder and also the 13th moon becomes her vision. Now, Elder is the grandmother of trees and she's the keeper of the divine feminine. Traditional folk stories say that if you sleep under an elder tree at night, you will journey between the worlds and you will see the truth in all things, including the truth of yourself. Now, this is particularly relevant as we are in a moon phase when we are being asked to reflect and review. This really is a time to integrate learning from all of the previous 12 moons of 2022 in preparation for a new cycle of soul growth and personal evolution. So we're now tuning into and aligning with the getting present in the card of Be Your Brilliant Self and the Rune of Gateway. This is a moon that is inviting you to face yourself in your wonderful humanness, no criticism, you know, look at your ups, look at your downs, and then from a place of profound honesty, look back over the previous year, celebrate all the good stuff, but also slow down enough to notice the things that you would like to be different. Now, when we set New Year resolutions, we often list all of the, all of the things that we're intending to give up so that we can free ourselves from limiting habits. The influence of this moon is here to show us exactly what we need to see so we can then attend to the details, cross the T's, dot the I's and move beyond previous limitations. So this new moon in Capricorn invites us to get clear. It really asks questions. What really matters to you? What have you learned from the extraordinary year of 2022? Because it's been pretty epic. I don't know anyone that hasn't actually had to lean into some significant learning on some level and in some part of their lives. So what have you learned and what do you want to focus on and manifest in the coming year? A Capricorn moon is perfect for making wishes that focus on your ambitions, your goals, your personal desires for success and recognition, validation as well. So give yourself full permission to listen to those desires that really call from your heart as well as your mind. And if you're aware of any inner blocks to your success, such as self-doubt or a lack of confidence, this is the perfect time to make wishes that support the release of any form of self-sabotaging thinking patterns or behaviours. This is the perfect moon to focus on your future, think about your long-term goals and start to take a structured approach to the potential that you wish to step into in the coming year of 2023. You may also want to request to be shown the next pragmatic and practical steps to manifest this into being, although be prepared to, during this moon phase, be working on preparation rather than the actualization in the immediacy of this. Now, wishes and intentions are different. We tend to lump them together. Lots of people use, use the phrases together. They are actually different. A wish is something that springs from the heart. It's a desire. It's something you really, really, really want. An intention is a mindset. It's uh, it's often, a say, it's much more goal oriented in terms of practical stuff, how we are actually you know, going to do things. What do you intend to do to support your dreams and wishes? So your your dreams, your wishes are to do with. Um, let me give you an example. Let's say my first um, new moon wish might be I wish to have any inner blocks removed so that my manifestations can flow easily. I would then perhaps set an intention alongside that. I always set 10 new moon wishes and 10 new moon intentions. The intention alongside it might be that I intend to meditate daily for at least 10 minutes, or I intend to create an affirmation that supports the removal of those blocks. So one is the wish and the desire. The other is what you intend to do or what you are going to commit to doing so that you are an active participant in your own manifestations. You know, manifesting isn't just about throwing a wish into the universe and sitting back and assuming it's going to land 
land in your lap. Actually, we have to do stuff too. We have to walk those pathways. It's no good being a spiritual person if you don't live a spiritual life. You know, it, it, it needs to be integrated and it needs to work as a, you know, a whole package. You are involved in manifesting, not just in your in your um, setting of wishes, but also in your actual doing. Now, what you will see on the screen now are the timings for this new moon across the globe. The reason I'm bringing these up is because when we set new moon wishes and intentions, the very best time to actually um, to do this is within the eight hours following the exact moment when the sun and the moon join together. It's like a sacred marriage where the divine feminine and the divine masculine come together. It's very potent. So as close as you can within that point of union, that is the best. And for the eight hours afterwards, that is the best time to set your new moon wishes and your new moon intentions. So let's now have a look at the next moon phase. So we have the new moon and the moon then starts from our perspective to get bigger. This is the crescent moon phase um, and the crescent moon phase runs between the new moon and the first quarter. And I always feel like if you think of the new moon as the point when you're sitting in your car and you're setting up your GPS and you're working out where you're going to go, this is the point where we kind of need to come out of the parking lot. And sometimes this can be really, really plain sailing. You know, it's like every light turns to green. We move forwards really easily. Sometimes the energy doesn't support us in such a, a flowing kind of way. Sometimes actually it's a bit stop start. So let's have a look at a little bit of the details of this moon phase for you. Now, the waxing crescent moon runs from December the 24th to December the 29th. The moon will pass through Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces and into Aries. And during this time, the moon will pass Venus, Mercury, Pluto, all in Capricorn. Then she passes Saturn in Aquarius. Mercury then moves into retrograde and then um, the moon passes Neptune and Jupiter. Now, the gist of all of this really is to say that we are both deciders, but also doers in manifestation. You know, we must follow our dreams through with very clear decisions and also actions that foster progress and emergence. Now, the overall kind of dynamics of this period are fostering transformation and emergence, but it's definitely best approached through that internal reflective, steady, structured, crossing T's, dotting I's, doing the groundwork. And I think if you can really in this moon phase, um, get present and be responsive to everything that is going on around you, listen to the signs, you know, rather than trying to push and make things happen, I think that is absolutely the very best way to use this energy in your manifestations, because we are still in this space of the rune of gateway, where we are reflecting, leaning into gratitude for the learning. You may find stuff shows up um, that kind of pushes you into a space of knowing what you need to do and also what you need um, to, to sort of let go of as well. So quite an interesting moon phase here. We then reach the first quarter moon on December the 30th in Aries. Well, Aries energy is all about building the new. This first quarter moon is sitting between Jupiter and Chiron, the healing energy of Chiron, the expansive energy of Jupiter. What this kind of means, because the first quarter is always a point of review and evaluation. For those of you that are familiar with the Celtic cross um, layout of tarot cards, you know, when we lay the first card down, which is the seeker of the reading, and then we have a crossing card. That's the energy of the first quarter moon. It's a, a space of reflection. It's telling us what we need to step into, step over, overcome, let go of in order to progress and move forwards. That's the energy of the first quarter. And so right here and right now, the overall energy is supporting the unveiling and the revealing of anything that we need to see to clear our pathway forwards. So if any obstacles are around some aspect of your manifestations, trust the process and have faith that the way will become clear. And if your manifestations are working, if there's something that is working for you and it's on track, trust the process and have faith and continue on track. 
And given that this is December the 30th, we are literally on the verge of the new year. Honour all that you have achieved and all that you have become and get prepped to welcome in a new year of possibilities because the first quarter energy, remember that rune of gateway, the first quarter is really going to lean into that space of review and highlight for you anything that needs to be attended to, to clear the pathway forwards. We then move into the waxing gibbous moon from December the 31st to January the 5th. And the moon will pass through Aries, Taurus, Gemini and into Cancer. Now, this is interesting because despite us having both Mercury and Mars in retrograde positions, which can bring about interruptions, disruptions, the overall energy during this moon phase is actually remarkably flowing. It, it's steady and yet dynamic. Now, there's a couple of quite strong spikes of energy and greater intensity around the second and the fifth. So in your manifestations, um, I would say the lunar flow is about perseverance with consistent, steady action while simultaneously remaining flexible. So I hope that makes some sense. And be responsive if any unexpected situations and circumstances arise, even if they interrupt your flow and create disruption, they are here to initiate evaluation and review, and they are here with purpose. The Mercury retrograde energy and the Mars retrograde energy are really assisting us in being able to see with clarity what we need to change in order to move forwards. And Mercury in retrograde very often actually brings disruptions and diversions that open new pathways of opportunity. We have to be prepared to connect with that possibility, though, rather than just getting frustrated that things aren't running smoothly for us. On January the 6th and the 7th, we have a new uh, full moon in Cancer, about to say new moon. Now, um, a full moon will always illuminate things so that we can see the way forwards. Sometimes this involves letting go and making adjustments, and sometimes it's literally showing us the pathway forwards. In many ways, those are two sides of the same coin, of course. Now, I'm just going to bring up the timings for you so you can see, um, you know, what that will be wherever you are on our beautiful planet. So you should now be able to see them. Now, today's full moon in Cancer sits directly opposite Mercury in retrograde and naturally invites all of us to slow down and observe. So it, it's quite interesting, the dynamics really, because a Cancer moon will also put you in touch with emotions, highlighting areas of your life that are related to nurture and care, including self-care, your family, your home. And so this moon is actually going to be very emotionally intense. So given the Mercury retrograde energy, Use this powerful time to consciously slow down, listen and observe. Take an inventory of your personal life right here and right now. Honour your feelings. Commit to a pathway of, self, of healthy self-care and really also commit to letting go of anything that inhibits that process, you know, and pledge to a year of manifestations that will spring from the heart rather than the head. We then move into the disseminating or waning gibbous moon phase, which runs from January the 8th to January the 13th, passing through Leo, Virgo and into Libra. Now, the overall energy flow of this period is interesting because I think there is it's going to require a clarity of intent. There's a really big spike of energy on the 10th, which can foster very solid growth, but could also call us to sort of face facts and get real. So depending on how this energy comes, you might want to make a note of that. That's the 10th of January. Depending on how this is coming into your personal world and the unique circumstances of your personal world, just be prepared and use the information to inform you and invest your time and energy wisely. Don't try, um, don't get re don't get reactive, as it were. Be thoughtful and observational here. Mercury is still in retrograde, so hold your longer term vision and really stay steady on your course. When we get into the disseminating or waning gibbous moon, the moon is beginning from our perspective to get smaller. Um, but the energy is still quite high. There's still um, potential for consistent progress. So given that we have this big spike of energy on the 10th, um, 
if there's any disruptions, it's really showing you something very important. This is a good moon phase to really invest in laying your foundations, but to lay them well and pay attention to the details. You know, a solid foundation creates a resilient and durable future. Now, Mars stations direct on the 12th, but we also see quite a strong um, spike of lunar energy that could be quite emotionally intense at the same time. So if you feel a bit wobbly, especially with Mars adjusting, um, just ride the waves and flow into the energy on the 13th, which then suggests that we're going to see a potential for some significant shifts forwards that are helping us to rebalance and realign and find calmer waters. So... This is not an entirely um, smoothly running moon phase, uh, the waning gibbous phase at this point in time, but I do think there's real purpose to it. Disruptions will be bringing information and also an opportunity through very solid, consistent, steady actions, paying attention to the detail. I think we're going to see some significant potential shifts um, literally shedding, shedding. Um, I feel like it's almost like we're taking a, a coat off that no longer fits that kind of, it's got that kind of flavor and that kind of energy around it. The last quarter moon is on January the 14th and 15th in Libra. The last quarter moon is a is a moon that invites us to step up and walk our talk. There's always an evaluation around the quarter moons. But these this is a time when we're being asked to be the change that we wish to see in the world. Step up, walk your talk. Are your actions in alignment with your dreams and your wishes for a better world for yourself and everybody else as well? Now, the overall lunar dynamics at this last quarter in Libra do suggest an intensity. And almost as if we move from a space of sudden evaluation to a place where maybe action is called for and almost with a sense of urgency. OK, so you might find that events surface around this time that demand a response, particularly in situations that either feel unjust or unfair. So in terms of spiritual growth, these events are here to strengthen us. They are here to build a resilient and durable inner foundation that's based on personal congruence and authenticity. So in short, whatever is happening in your world, step up and be yourself with openness, honesty and integrity. And the universe will support you. Integrity is really, really profound um, in terms of the energetics of support when there could be quite a challenging intensity around. We then move into the balsamic moon or the waning crescent moon. So the moon is now dwindling and we're moving towards the new. Now, this runs from January the 16th to January the 20th, and the moon will pass through Scorpio, Sagittarius and into Capricorn. This moon phase actually does begin with a very karmic flavour. So given the energetics of that last quarter, during this period, you may well be shown opportunities that actually shift your perspective. So you can view all sides of the story, keep the bigger picture in mind, create new ways of seeing, doing and being. So you can see why this whole moon phase is quite extraordinary in terms of setting the pace for the coming year energetically. Now, with the sun entering Aquarius on the 20th, you may well be shown everything you need to know in order to focus on creating very sound and very dynamic new moon wishes and intentions for the first new moon of 2023, which comes on January the 21st. This coming new moon is actually a moon of ambition. There's an energy of rebirth and emergence around it. And of course, we are now um, with Mars moving into a, a forward motion and also Mercury, I, I'd like to say fasten your seatbelts um, and get ready because the next moon phase is actually, I think, going to have the potential to move things forwards quite significantly. So use this balsamic waning moon phase to get clear. It's a really important time for observation, reflection, preparation and consolidation. Um, you know, this whole moon phase really is absolutely perfect for us to establish ourselves for the coming year when we then move into the first moon of um of january of 2023 
stuff is going to start picking up and moving forwards. Um, I will, of course, be doing a big video then as well and ahead of time for you with all of these details. But I think you can really see how this is quite an extraordinary moon for setting the pace. I mentioned before about doing some readings for all signs. They do very much focus on that kind of energetic for each of the signs. And if you know your sun sign, your moon sign and your rising sign, um, if you are tuning into Patreon to look at those, it's really worth looking at all three. Now, lastly, but not leastly, I want to just run over some for very specific void of course periods during this moon phase. Now, a void of course moon is when the moon moves between one sign and another. From our perspective, as she journeys through the heavens, we see her move from one zodiac sign to another zodiac sign. And when she moves through those zodiac signs, she is really embodying the, um, the qualities, the personalities of those zodiac signs. Those are the energies that we are receiving here um, on our beautiful planet. And when she moves from one sign to another, there is sometimes a gap between the two. When she's not really being governed or channeling her energy through and in alignment with the personality of anything. Now, if you are on track and your life is running really, really well, a big void of course moon period, because sometimes they are just an hour or two, other times they are hours and hours and hours, and we've got four really big periods this moon phase. When she moves through a big void of course period, if your world is on track, to be quite honest with you, it can feel absolutely liberating. You're not encumbered or hindered by any restrictions. But if you're having a bit of a wobble, it can really enhance that wobble. Or well, that's certainly been my experience. So when there is a big void, of course, period, I do tend to highlight them in these videos. So let me grab my bit of paper and I will just read these to you. So um, the first one is actually on December the 26th on Boxing Day. Um, there is a void, of course, moon that runs from um, 1819. So that's this is GMT times here. So that's 19 minutes past six in the evening, right through until um, just gone half past seven on the 27th. This is 13 hours. So wherever you are in the world, um, in the UK here, it's kind of overnight. But actually, um, depending on where you are, it could be daytime. So do check this out. So 18, 19, December the 26th, it's 13 hours long. Then on January the 5th, when the moon is moving from Gemini and into Cancer, 7 a.m. in the morning to 14, 15 p.m. in the afternoon, that's 14 hours long. So very big. Gemini into Cancer, January the 5th, that's the second of the big void of course periods. The third is on January the 10th, 01.52 a.m. to 15.16 p.m. Those are GMT times. That's 13 hours when the moon moves from Leo into Virgo. And on January the 19th as well, 10.08 a.m. to 19.12 p.m. That's nine hours for that void of course period. So do check those out. Make a note of them um, because... See how they affect you personally. It's always worth um, checking out those things. I mean, the reason I created the uh, Manifest with the Moon, I've got them here, and you, you will pr probably know of them. Some of you will have bought these, and, and thank you, all of you who have. But the reason I created the diary and the journal was to give you a layout and the information that you need to be able to manifest with the moon and really learn how the moon affects you personally as she moves through the different signs. But the extra void, of course, information I think is really helpful to know. Super Souls, thank you so, so much for joining me for this video. Thank you um, for supporting the channel. Thank you for liking, subscribing, sharing. All of these things really, really do help and support the channel and help me to continue to put free stuff into the world. And thank you all of you who are there on Patreon supporting those readings, those tutorials and my massively big online library that I have. It's an emotional and psychological resource. Um, I worked full time as a counsellor, a psychotherapist, uh, an accredited counsellor for over 28 years. So 
that library is there for anyone who is ever having any emotional or psychological difficulties. It's a free resource. And my Patreon people, it's um, your contributions that enable me to keep that as a free resource. So thank you so, so much. And I hope that you guys over on Patreon are enjoying the extra stuff that I'm posting for you. And anyone that wishes to join us over there, um, you are very, very welcome. Tons and tons of love. Have an amazing moon month. Take it easy. There's some big spikes of energy. Uh, this, I really do feel, is going to set the pace for the coming year. So it is really worth um, investing your energy in this month in a very particularly um, focused but also relaxed way um, in order to um, really bring your, your 2023 wishes, goals, ambitions into, in, into form. So super souls, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, I am loving doing these. I'm so passionate about working with the moon. It has been utterly life-changing for me. So I'm really, really enjoying sharing this with you. Tons and tons of love.